Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. If any of you follow me on TikTok and Instagram, you'll know by now that I do a lot of light painting videos, photos and tutorials. Today I thought I'd come into London and uh, show you a bit more in depth of how we make it happen and a bit behind the scenes of what we do and how we frame it up and how to shoot it. Okay, so gear wise, I shoot on the Sony mirrorless system, recently upgraded from the a7 II to the a7 III. And Coupling that with the Sigma 14 to 24 f2.8, the uh, the wide aperture really makes a good combo for low light conditions. Uh, light bar, we've got the Yonguo um, YN360. You can find these on Amazon quite easily. And then tripod, we've got the Manfrotto B3 Advanced. I'll link all the gear down below in the description. Okay, so we've just come down to just across from London Bridge, opposite the Shard and we're at this quite popular light painting spot by this, um, these stairs. Basically the shot in mind that I have, I'm gonna outline the architecture around the stairs on both levels with different colors. Um, I'm gonna set up the shot now and uh, I'll get back to you in a sec. Okay, time for some technical bits. Uh, I've set the camera up in portrait and I'm gonna be shooting on a two second timer for the shutter. So when I hit the shutter, it's not gonna have any camera shake. The settings that I've got punched in are six seconds, the aperture set at nine and the ISO is at 100. Basically the idea is to get three shots and combine them. One of the subjects sat in the triangle, one of the first level outlining the, uh, the handrail almost, and then the third shot is the second level outline in the handrail as well. Okay, so we're going to do the first shot now. It's going to be the top level of the staircase. Yep. Let's have a look. Yeah, for a first attempt, that's really good. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the second shot now, which is the second layer of the staircase. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna move on to the second layer, the second shot of light painting. Um, if you look down there, you can see that there is quite a light, quite a bright light on. So we're going to adjust the settings from the aperture being 11. We're going to pump that to a more narrow aperture of f16, so it's not as blown out. You ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay, so let's take a look at this photo. Wow, sick, so clean. Jeez. Yeah, so by lowering all those settings, it made it so that the frame was a lot less blown out, so it's easier to mask together in Photoshop in post-production. Okay, so for the subject for the light paintings, it always looks a bit better when you have trousers on. So I'm just gonna quickly change so we look a lot better in the frame. Okay, so the third and final shot is going to be me as a subject sat in this little structure above the staircase, holding the light bar. Okay, so the previous settings were for the light trail, so the set at 10 seconds and the aperture's at 16. I'm definitely not going to be able to sit still for 10 seconds, so I'm going to bump that down to about one second, and also bump the aperture to about, let's go for 3.5. Yeah, ready? Okay, so now we've got all three shots. One, two, 
and free. We're going to head back into Lightroom and Photoshop and I'm going to show you how to edit it all together. Okay, so we're back home now and I've got the three different photos that we took here. Uh, the first one being the top layer light painting, uh, the second photo being the bottom layer light painting and the third photo being the subject photo. So what I'm going to start off with doing is going into Lightroom and I'm going to import just the subject photo because later on I'm going to mask together the two light paintings in Photoshop so I only need to import one photo and that is going to be the subject photo. Starting off, it is quite dark, so I'm just going to make some minor adjustments before I go into Photoshop. I'm just going to up the exposure and a bit of the shadows, and then bring down the highlights so that it's not so blown out. Okay, so now we've got our minor adjustments in Lightroom sorted, I'm going to head into Photoshop. So to do that, you just right click, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so now we're in Photoshop, I'm going to head over to File and Place Embedded. So here we're going to select the, the light paintings and we're going to place them on top of the subject. Okay, so when you hit Place Embedded, it's going to come up with this. All you have to do is just hit OK. I don't usually worry about any of these things on the side. And then usually I bring it into the corner and then hit shift and just make sure it all lines up correctly. There we are. Hit enter and then if you should move the opacity you should see that they're actually in line already so that makes your life ten times easier you don't have to go around trying to make sure the shard or the light painting or the subject actually lines up correctly. Okay, so I've renamed the two photos so it's a lot easier to kind of see which one I'm working with. So I'm going to start off with the uh, subject photo. I've unlocked it and I'm going to bring it up to the top. So it's now above the light painting one. And then I'm going to hit this little tool here, which is the masking tool. That brings up this little, this white screen, which is actually the mask, the thumbnail. And then I'm going to head over to the brush tool. So at the moment it's on the white colour, so that counts as um, adding. So basically, if I go onto the photo now, with this white colour brush, nothing's going to happen. But if I hit, if I change it to black, it now is subtract. So as you see, I start to paint in the light painting. I make sure to kind of look at the, um, the framing and I try and paint around almost the architecture, so it blends in nice. So if I went across here, it's quite hard to blend in and a lot of work. So I usually make sure just to stay on the architecture so it's a lot easier and it looks a lot more blended. Okay, so now I've finished off painting in the top level light painting into the subject photo. I'm now going to merge the two together. So for this, you hit shift, select them both, right click and merge layers just at the bottom here. There we are. And now for the second part, I'm gonna now mask in the bottom layer of the light painting. So again, file, place embedded, then select your bottom layer of light painting and hit place. OK here. And then again, you want to bring it up to the top. Usually I like doing it to the top left. Hold and shift and then just drag it out. And I'll bring the subject photo X top level. spelling. I'll bring that one now up to the top and then again you hit the mask and go into the brush tool. Um, black is sub subtract and then white is add so white won't do anything and then black will now allow me to paint in this bottom layer of light painting.
Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. So now we've got the top layer light painting, the bottom layer light painting, and the subject photo all now into one raw file. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to combine these again. Um, all the way down to merge layers. And now I'm just going to start trying to just clear up a few bits in the photo. So um, as you can see, there's kind of like a light flare from this light here. Uh, I'm just going to select the spot brush tool and boom, all gone. And as you can see, the, uh, the bottom layer is quite a, <laughs> quite a dirty um, kind of path. So now I'm just going to quickly blitz through this and try and just clean it up so it looks a lot better. Okay, so the tool that I've just used to clean all that up is the spot healing brush. It's just magical, honestly. Look, this part here looks a bit not really keen on the uh, the join in between. Spot healing brush all the way down. Gone. <laughs> How good is that? Okay, now we've got these reflections on the top of the, uh, the structure. So now for this, I'm going to use a mixture of the um, spot healing brush to get rid of them and then the content aware fill as well. So for content aware fill, usually I use the polygon lasso tool. Um, you could easily select the part that you want to content aware and then I go to edit content of what I feel. Uh, let's take this out because we don't want that in. Trying to get rid of that. Yeah, so a lot better. Nice. Sometimes I also use the stamp tool so you could select a part of the image where you want to copy and you could almost just, if I'm doing it, just stamp it in. Okay, so that's a quick example of how you could just um, use the clone stamp tool, the content aware fill and the spot healing brush to kind of edit out different reflections or different distractions in your image. Now I've got the um, kind of the raw file of all different photos all put together. I'm now going to go back into Lightroom. So to do this, it's just an easy um, if you're on Mac, Command S or on computer, Control S and then that will save the image um, so basically because I imported it from Lightroom it will save all the changes that I've done and then import the new um, changed file back into Lightroom for me so if I go back to Lightroom, there we are, we have the old original file and now we have the new file with um, three different photos merged together. So now it's time just to basically just edit the photo how you would like your own. So usually I quite like my night photos in the city, just more a bit bluey, a um, bit bright, highlights quite, quite bright, so all the lights are the popping almost. So now I'm just gonna quickly just breeze through how I usually edit mine. Okay, so there you have it. There's my final image. It is three photos composited together. So the first one is the top level light painting. 
second photo is the bottom level of my painting, and the third photo is the subject um, in the kind of structure that we um, found down in London. So um, yeah, I um, hope you guys have learned something, I hope you guys um, like the behind the scenes of how we shoot the, um, these different light paintings. Um, be sure to tag me in, um, in the ones that you create, or use the hashtag, hashtag and I'll be sure to check them out. Thanks very much.